Hi there. Hello. Can you guess where we are? Do you recognise this place? You should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> we're back in Finnecay. Yep, we're... Uh, Sorry, I've got to put my glasses on. It's so bright. <laughs> it is really bright and sunny. And windy. And windy. But hopefully that hasn't made any difference to the sound quality. More about that later. Um, in this video, we uh, have to re-thread our outhaul to our mainsail, and it's a bit of a mission. Uh, and it was only after we'd done the job and I sat down with a gin and tonic, I realised I could have done it in about... So much easier. So much easier in about 30 seconds. Hey ho, we live and learn. So watch for the top tip. Um, also, we made a quick dash, well, not a quick dash, but we made a bit of a... Uh, a motor back to Finnecay because next week we're going on a mission and we couldn't be late for that mission, no. could we? Dun, dun, dun. Um, so, watch the video and uh, we'll see you at the end. Bye. Not to be outdone by Steve on sailing Ferrol, we caught a decent sized fish. <laughs> Some early morning starts give us fantastic sunrises and we managed to capture a couple of those. So we've had to take the gas strut off, the kicker, the rod kicker, the seldom one. Oh no, not your bucket of tea. My bucket of tea. And yes, the new pole, da da da, is up and running. The last two weeks on Impavidus has seen us sailing back south again from Kusadasi and then down to Didham via the Greek Isle of Samos and then over to Marmaris via the Greek Isle of Kos. We stayed five or six days in Marmaris picking up supplies and bits and bobs before moving on to first Gocek, one of our favourite places, and then on to Fetia and then back to Finike, where we are now. Quite a long trek, considering just a few months ago I was on the operating table having major heart surgery. Let's turn that GoPro on, it's only got 50% battery and I charged it up the other day. It's uh, just gone five in the morning. We've just left um, Didham. And yes, it's dark. You won't even see port and starboard lights there. It's our aft steaming light. That's our radar on. Just about see that. And we've got thick fog now. This blip here is David. This, we're not sure what it is. We're putting some sounds out, but uh, yeah, we're running, we're running our red lights in the cabin and uh, out in the cockpit. Very dark. Just see the outline of Cindy there in the companion way. Can't even see her waving. I can. It's dark, and it's cold, and it's eerie. It's horrible. Was it ten past six? Up past six, up past six in the morning. Just as the sun was rising, a pretty maiden in the valley below. Not exactly a spectacular sunrise, but. No. Cup of tea on the go. Everything's working. It is really thundery over there. Glad that we're going south. Something big and floaty on the water over there, look. Probably a fishing box. Well, we've come out of the fog and we're into um, open water now. Just nothing, 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 nothing. Greece is about 20 miles over in that direction. 
and there's some um, there's an island which you probably might just see over there which is a Turkish island um, everything was damp so we had to put our usual cushions up under the canopy and then um, Cindy stands look out in here just in here you get um, you don't get any light pollution from the instruments or anything even though we've got them turned down um, they're still a white light not a red light so you do get a bit of light pollution but hey ho there was um there was no moon at all last night so it was really dark and it was foggy and um, low cloud so we couldn't see a sausage Welcome to Sailing the Mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, well then, I'll get me a cup of chai on the go. And talk to you all later. How about that for a sunrise? Over the top of the mountain. Lovely. Absolutely gorgeous, lovely colours. Well, today just happened to be my birthday, and uh, I've, we've had our breakfast, and I've opened my cards from everybody, and um, we might have another fish on. We've just had one on, I'll show you the pictures. Hang on a minute. I don't believe this. Every time we get the camera out. Now this is the fish that we caught. We think it's a sawfish, but it could be a sailfish or something else. Don't know. If you know what this is, let us know in the comments. And by the way, we put him back alive. We're on our way back to Didham. Didham. On today, the 16th of September, which is Mr. Anthony Curtis's 60th birthday. No, it's not. I'm only 31, really. Did you know that the pink panther is from Didham? Didham. 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 Anyway, en route, <laughs> he had some new lures for his birthday, and he caught what we think is a sailfish. Picture in the bottom. I'm not sure if it's a sailfish or a sailfish. It's a baby, whatever it was, and we put him back to survive yeah. another day. Yeah, I think it was what? Three, probably three or four kilos. Yeah, big. More than anything, he had this big long pointy sharp thing on the front. I weren't getting anywhere near that. Yeah, I hadn't realised just how sharp they were. And he was freshing around. Yeah. But he was alive and was alive. Yeah. So that's the important thing. If it'd been tuna, we'd have kept it. I think I mean swordfish is really good eating. I know, but it was only a baby. It's only a baby. well it's only a baby. It was a, no, that, that more like that. That big. Mm. So and then about that much of the nosy bit. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean they're good eating but so not when they're a baby. Not when they're a baby. <laughs> We're doing 5.5, yeah, it's between 5.2 and 5.5, occasionally 6. Uh, the wind is 71 degrees apparent, so it's a broad reach. We can actually pull the come off it. Gennaro in a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, it, what's the. Um, What's the clue pulling down a little bit? The top edge is flapping. Um, 
probably a slightly bigger curve in the, uh, in the main. That's better. But no engine noise. For the first time. I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> For the first time. I'm, I'm gonna wind up David now. Oh, we left Marmaris this morning at uh, 7 o'clock. Yep. It's now 10.30. 10.30. We are uh, on our way to Gochek. We had some great wind about 30 seconds ago. Um, and now everything's back in. Let's show you. Pickles. So we had wind over the uh, port side. We had wind over the port side um, at about 45, 50 degrees, which is ideal for us. Um, and we were cranking along seven and a half knots about five minutes. <laughs> yeah for five minutes and then uh, it just died um, and now we've put the engine back on and the jib's back in I should roll it in or um, or change angle because things are starting to flow and yes the new pole da, 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 is up and running uh, it is absolutely covered in dust where it's been sitting there for a couple of weeks but yes the new poles up and running and um, we're just on the head saw doing one or two knots 1.9 1 1.9 <laughs> 1 oh blimey oh we've come up a bit then so we're doing two knots in five knots of wind on just a hundred and five percent jib Hmm. Hey ho. So the outhaul was the major problem in that it was absolutely filthy dirty and it had gone stiff. So stiff you could push the boat with it. So there it is down there, we've washed it. Um and we put a telltale in the boom in there. And then we took the sheets off the boom and the boom promptly swung out with the wind and the telltale disappeared. So a lesson learned. So we should have taped it off the telltale instead of uh, just tying the knot in one end. What that has meant is that first I had to go and get an electrician's draw tape because I hadn't got one on the boat which was stiff enough. So this this is an electrician's draw tape. Basically, it's a nylon tape with a steel wire inside it, and you can push it down conduit. Now, we could only get it halfway down this boom, about to where David's knees are, when the boom was horizontal. So we've had to take the gas strut off, the kicker, the rod kicker, the seldom one. My able assistant is demonstrating now. Um, and we have to take that off while it's under tension otherwise it will swing off and punch you in the face um, then we had to use the topping lift which is the grey line here which my able assistant is cunningly demonstrating there and we had to let the boom down into the cockpit here so that we had enough angle for the uh, draw cord to have some gravity assist from the other end where David's got his hands at the moment and then we used the end of a fishing rod with a hook on just to pick the end of the draw cord up because it was stuck about where are we about there yeah about four feet just over a meter from the end and now we've got the end off of the boom and we're pulling the telltale back up now threading it all the way through uphill all the way in position and we're just debating whether to leave another telltale in there in case that ever happens again it would be handy We'll have a think about it, but meanwhile, we're going to thread this through. So I've taped 
the end of the purple line on there just tapered it down a bit to the end of the out hall and we're now going to pull that back through the boom and then back to the winches on the coach roof there let's show you that bucket there's a blue and white toothpaste type tube that's got silicone grease on it a plastic tube that's the one there we go silicon fet um, you, what you need to do now is have a film of Sid going back in her box where she belongs ok right get back in your box get back in your box <laughs> <laughs> now we've got to get the boom across under the bimini winch it back up on the topping lift and we don't normally use the topping lift because we've got a gas kicker okay hold it there and we'll put the sheets on okay three inches gap <laughs> My tea. Oh no, not your bucket of tea. My bucket of tea. Hope oh, they've lost one. Their halyards wrapped around their um spreaders. They'll probably send a rigger down now. How silly does what some one man feel? <laughs> it's still on the halyard, but it's wrapped around next door's boat. I had that once in, uh, with one of those bird scares in the South Sea, you know, those vibrating yeah. pieces of plastic. And the bloke on one side of me cut it, and it then went all around the other side. He'll be buying the first round tonight in the clubhouse, send money. Okay, well we're actually motoring back to Finnecay now um, because it's flat calm, absolutely flat calm. Um, the lazarette's open, we've got almost everything out, all of our spare lines and our tie-back ropes um, and Cindy's got the washing machine going downstairs while we make uh, water um, and we're currently making about 40 litres an hour um, which is really good for the amount of uh, 
energy it takes to, to run the two pumps. Of course we can run one pump which makes um, something like 20 litres an hour but uh, it's hardly worth it. We've got so much spare power now. So what I wanted to show you in the final part of this video was um, how the outhaul line uh, goes down the centre of the boom and that was the one that was the, the real pain. So I'm going to start at the clutches and the winch and it goes down through this clutch here and then down to the deck tidy. Uh, let's have a let's have a look at that there. I need to tell Cindy I'm going out on deck because she's down below. I'm going out on deck, love. All right. Okay. So just a safety thing. If you're let's say I was to fall off here, um, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Well, actually, it's about half past eight. Um, and if I was to fall off here, there's the nearest land is about two miles away there, about six miles away there. Greece is about 30 miles away there. Land about two miles there. Um, so if I was to fall off, basically, that would be my lot. Anyway, back to the record. So there's the deck tidy. Now, there's the deck tidy. It comes from the deck tidy or deck organizer to this block here then to a fixed block on the mast and then it goes up into the boom via another pulley it then goes down the boom on the inside and then out of the boom at the tail end right at the end of the boom on another pulley and then it comes back 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 through this pulley here up to the sail and then back down what happens is that this pulley is on a slider so that when you pull the outhaul out it pulls the sail out and interestingly um, on this particular Selden rig we have a ratchet now that pin there which is the only one thing we can't operate from the cockpit um, if you move that's currently on out but if you move it to in the single line so that's one continuous line that goes back to the cockpit there um, will only go in one direction it's on a ratchet and that stops the sail from going out um, if it's really windy and you're putting it away obviously with a ratchet on it will only rotate in one direction so that's how it works and that was why it was such a pain in the backside um, now I'm going to give you the very best tip you'll ever have after I'd sat down in the evening with the gin and tonic and thought about how I could have done it better rather than taking the boom off and pushing the electrical tape up the inside the um, electrician's draw tape or draw wire I realised I've got an 8 metre um, steel tape, tape measure, that I could have just pushed up the inside with a small piece of uh, fishing line or something on it. So I had all the stuff here to do it, um, really easy, but just didn't use my brain. Uh, and when I sat down and thought about it, I had no need to take the boom off I could have simply removed the end here push pushed the tape measure up the inside because it will push you know six or seven meters in a straight line would have came out here I could have fished the, the string or line or fishing wire out of this end and then rigged it and that would have saved me a lot a lot of trouble I'm probably gonna get some questions about the German sheet system so our sheets go mid boom or just past mid boom one port uh, one port one starboard they then come back to a block on the kicker then down to a turning block through the deck organizer deck tidy and then back to either two either one of those two winches what that does is it allows us to as you can see here when we're motoring 
uh, we can lock the boom in position but we can also lock the boom in any position um, up to about 40 degrees 45 degrees off center so we don't need a preventer because we can lock the leeward side um, sheet off and that works as a preventer that's really handy um, especially if your spreaders come back like ours do yeah um, so that's how that German sheet system works um, I'm really impressed with it I, I really like it a lot if I had another boat I would um, I would certainly rig that and it is so easy to rig right onward finicay that way moved <laughs> hi again hello again yeah we've moved um it was a bit too sunny and bright and windy over there so we've moved over to the uh well finicay side yeah they this is the um part of the ataturk parks that they have in um, finicay um this one is a children's park and last night here they had a children's concert concert for kids uh, with films and what have you music it was uh really quite good wasn't yeah, it that's fun. um hope you enjoyed the video anyway yeah hope you enjoyed that you will notice that we are sporting these new uh microphones and hopefully it's made a difference to the sound i'll find out when i take the film <laughs> camera back uh and um edit the video um until next time i guess there's nothing much oh got a mission next week oh, shh, shh. Shh. oh yeah it's top secret <laughs> um we're going on a mission uh we're not sure if we're allowed to film on that mission or not we've got to see the owners but we may be joining the dark side bum, bum, bum. <laughs> but um, more about that next time next time until then guys don't forget to uh give us a thumbs up like subscribe share push all the buttons down the bottom and thank you to the patreons for buying our new equipment yeah thanks guys we've been saving up for quite a few months now to upgrade our sound and hopefully next we'll upgrade our cameras um until then or until next week bye so safe day. bye <laughs>